What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. This is the first day of like non-rain we have had in two to three days here and it's been kind of brutal. I'll show you guys some of uh, what we're gonna be dealing with today in a second but this is our one day break we have and then tomorrow's supposed to rain again. There might be another day off and then rain again. I'll go check the rain gauge in a second here and see how much rain we have gotten but it's been quite a bit at least for our area and it's been really cold. So you guys know we have a bunch of animals here, right? We've got donkeys, goats, chickens, geese, guinea hens, which are right there kind of walking around the yard. The peacocks are floating around somewhere. I'm sure I'm forgetting something that we have. Oh, we got a bowl. We used to have a bunch of cats, but unfortunately the coyotes have been crazy the last couple of months and well, we are down to one cat left, which is crazy because those guys are super, super smart and our cats were like, they are always elevated. Like they're rarely on the ground unless they're out hunting, but apparently the coyotes outsmarted them. That and being that it's been so cold, we have our one cat left and I'm definitely allergic to cats. Like I can't have an indoor cat. But being that it's been so cold out here and rainy and windy and just miserable, I've actually been putting uh, our last cat in this cat carrier, closing up and then bringing her inside at night. It worked, but she would love to roam around inside the house at night and I just can't let her because then I won't be able to touch any of my furniture without breaking out in hives. So I went ahead and just quickly whipped up together this uh, little house I built up here. Like super quick, don't look too close to the carpentry. This was built at night in the freezing temperature and rain. Probably see this cord coming out at the bottom here and it's actually wrapped in a little metal there, which is nice. So our little cat Rocky, who is right there all cuddled up on her nice heating pad, is uh, really enjoying her new house, which is up elevated, away from where the coyotes can get her. Uh, she is really good at jumping onto the barbecue and then jumping up on that beam. So I figured, perfect spot, put a little cat bed for her with a heated pad so she is nice and comfortable and then doesn't need to come inside the house anymore. I made a quick costume change here because, well, I don't enjoy cold weather. And we're gonna be dealing with uh, some real cold water today. So according to the rain gauge here, we've got uh, just about two and three quarters inches, which again might not be a lot if you, you know, live on the East Coast, but that's kind of a lot of rain out here in a very short period of time. We're gonna try a little different angle today. I'm gonna to mount you guys right here, hang you off the overalls, because well, ain't no good way to mount a GoPro to a beanie. Also, shout out to the homies. Hold on, where's the, there's the logo, the long hairs. If you guys uh, are a man with some long hair, need some hair ties for guys, hit up the long hairs. All right, so over on this side of the driveway, we've got us quite a bit of a mess here. If you guys know, you can see kind of the drainage cut that runs right along there and runs all the way out of the property. I've never had an issue right here at all. Like we've been fine. This uh, little drainage section up here got a bit overwhelmed yesterday and uh, kind of backed up right here and overflowed there and then just made this big muddy mess in the driveway, which sucks because there's not a real thick bed of gravel here. So it's not like I can just grab some gravel over there and spread it over top of this. I always said I was not gonna bring more gravel out for this driveway and waste money, we were just gonna concrete this whole thing. And I was just gonna put band-aids on it the entire time until we were ready for concrete, but it looks like uh, we were pushed back too far on that. So uh, I went ahead yesterday in the pouring rain and just kind of dug this out a little bit more, but you can see what happens is there's like this real fine, silty, sandy layer here. And this is what clogs everything. And you're gonna see when we get down to the end of the driveway here, this stuff is gnarly. Like it's almost like quicksand. It's like you can see how much water it holds. Like that looks dry. And then you start kind of playing with it and stepping on a little bit. Then you can get a bunch of water to come to the surface. But it just gets so thick and sludgy that it clogs up everything. We've, we're pretty good up here. I fixed that yesterday, not too worried about it. It's the driveway that we got to go fix. We'll take the mini truck down to the gate. We'll survey what we're going to need in terms of tools and materials. Also, this thing is not fun to drive in boots. They, they don't really... <laughs> They don't really fit down there. Check this out. So this uh, two by 12 here fell. I used to have it propped right here and it's been blocking all these like tumbleweed like things that have come down here. This hose is also helping to act like a filter, uh, but it looks like it's kind of making things bypass my, my little rock section here, which this we put in because, uh, well, again, the silty stuff just makes its way all the way down the driveway. And look how much builds up, like it's, that's thick in there. And then, well, you <laughs> used to be able to see the inlet of a six inch drain there. What the heck was walking through here? Look at these, look at these little footprints. What do we got there? Huh, we actually do have a uh, giant pack of wild turkeys. I'll show you guys a video in a second uh, that roam this area. They're actually pretty cool. They just cruise, no cares in the world. How the coyotes don't get those guys, I have no idea. So, <laughs> 
Jeez, this whole thing got obliterated. Like, in case you guys don't believe, like the force of water that was coming down here, as well as coming from the driveway there, like it tore like concrete blocks apart. And these things aren't super solid. You can break these before they're grouted, but like water did that. <laughs> Good news is though, it didn't completely obliterate in front of the driveway here. So we don't really have that much to fix. We do a little bit down there, but not like where we actually drive. More so we got to deal with this. I mean, this is just so thick, full of sludgy crap here. And yes, before you say it, I know we need to upgrade this drainage inlet. It's going to happen at some point. We switched to a much bigger size that runs under the new driveway. Um, and we just tied it into the smaller one for now because to upgrade this one, we actually have to pull all of this rock work out, put in a bigger culvert pipe to here, and then piece all this rock work back together and make it look halfway decent. I'm not ready to spend the three days it's gonna take to do that or two days, um, especially with the weather being what it is. So for now, again, it's just kind of band-aid fixes. Now the good news is seeing that the water's not sitting here still. I mean, this was all the way up to, you know, obviously as high as it could go last night. Um, and I tried everything I could to like, and I tried everything I could to unclog that pipe, but I was like arm deep in this freezing water, just wasn't working. But again, the fact that there's no water in here right now lets me know that there is still some drainage happening there. We just have to break up all of, all of this crap. So I built the Rhino Rooter 2000, uh, a year ago or so which hooks up to my pressure washer it has a jetting nozzle on it and i tie it i basically zip tied it to a copper pipe and i shove it down in this thing i'm gonna try to not have to bring the whole pressure washer out here and do that i'm gonna see if we can just hook up a piece of 10 foot pvc with a just an end on it hook that up to the hose because we have amazing water pressure out here and see if that's going to be enough to just like liquefy all of that crap there and get it to drain out. And it may just be like me trying to be lazy and uh, we're gonna end up doing it twice, but let's just see what happens. Let's go do a little survey of the guest house backyard project here. Um, we gotta grab some sprinkler fittings out of the guest house garage. Basically, I share that garage with my tenants, just like I need one rack on the side there because I don't currently have a garage at the house. So uh, let's see, looks like the roof washed away, just a little bit of a line there of our road base. We can doctor that up pretty easy. We do have rain gutters that are gonna be going in here this week and that'll eliminate any water issues really that are back here, but everything else looks great. Plants look great. Looks like the animals, oh, they might've got to this one just a little bit there. Something was eating on that. Let's check the backside of this wall where we put our road base to keep from splashing and well, Looks great. There's no splashing on the back of the wall there, so that's good. I'm so stoked on how this guest house turned out. I mean, just adding the garage to it, making the garage nice, actually drywall in the garage and making it the laundry room. You can see our tenants are currently using it as like a little kickboxing studio here. Grab one stick of three quarter here. Hopefully that's enough. If not, you know, we can link a couple of these together, but I think 10 foot ought to be oh, plenty far. So the current tenants are growing, let's see, we got some lettuce. Uh, we got some jalapenos growing there. Uh, they're using two of the beds. Eventually they're gonna take over all these beds. We've got a bunch of tomatoes. We've got some tomatoes growing over here. Look at them boogers right there. Growing in, looking good. Like I said guys, these current tenants have been freaking awesome. Um, and they're totally utilizing like everything the guest house has to offer, which I love. Okay guys, hopefully this is a good angle and view for you. Um, and it's not too crazy. But we're gonna grab this hose. I've already had to glue this end on. Um, and this is very hokey together here. So. We've got a three quarter to threaded. We've got a female to female threaded. And if you guys don't know, um, when it comes to hose fittings, for whatever reason, a three quarter hose fitting is different than a three quarter PVC fitting. So I kind of just had to mush that booger in there and hoping for the best here. <laughs> We're gonna see if it leaks a little bit down here, it's not the end of the world. We just don't want uh, this blown out. Because on this other end here, I've got a three quarter slip to a half inch threaded. And we're either gonna run it wide open like so, or I'm gonna try and poke some holes in here and see if we make a little jetting hose out of this booger. We should probably actually glue this on now. That way it has some time to set up while we're clearing all the dirt out. Sorry if my hands keep getting in the way. This is a new angle for me to learn. Hold that on there, a little quarter twist. Lock it in. We'll go with a small center hole first. It's gonna be a lot of pressure. We're probably gonna blow this apart by doing this, but. We'll try that first. Hopefully we got enough hose to reach over here. Now I probably shouldn't have mushed these two together just yet. So I can put this uh, shut off in line here. Let's pull these apart. Maybe it's no biggie. All right, <laughs> here's to hoping that doesn't leak. 
What could go wrong? Okay, so we're gonna let this glue set up for a second. While we do, we're gonna get down there and clear all of that muck. And then we're also gonna have to kind of rebuild that, but let's get this cleared first. Oh, that stuff is thick right there. Much got the entire pipe exposed i was uh pulling out some of the mud and muck with that little hoe there spiked thing whatever you want to call that and you can see like the water just comes out of this stuff like that water just backed out from somewhere even though this points downhill and the weather has taken a turn and gotten significantly colder so we're gonna try to knock this out real quick so first things first let's give a little little test here we'll put some water in here oh she's building up towards the end oh look at that oh oh geez oh geez we got a got a little splash back here all right, so our hose end came out and uh, well, we ended up getting a little splash of water here. We'll work with what we got. I don't have the right PVC end for a hose fitting. So let's see if we can wedge this in a little tighter. Plus there's gonna be a ton of pressure on this because of that little eighth inch hole that we got down there. Let's see what happens when we get her up in the hole. We're gonna crank the pressure up, full bore, and let's just, you know, start doing the back and forth here. It's spraying out pretty good. Clearly there's still a clock further down though. Otherwise we wouldn't have this water just sitting here like this. So I'm just trying to liquefy everything that's in there and get it to carry all the way to the end of the pipe and hopefully that works. You'll see when it goes. Eventually all this stuff will go. Oh, starting to go, starting to go. We might have pushed a rock in place. Why is that so hard? Oh, there we go. Well, we got through it. I hope there's not a little rock in there. All right, I'm gonna pull the tip off of here and let's up the volume of water. Cause we might just not have enough volume to really liquefy all that sand that's in there. See what she looks like without this tip on there. There we go. Now we got a lot of volume of water. Oh, that might've been it, maybe. Maybe not, maybe not. I definitely feel a rock or something right here at this edge. Let's see if we can find it. I think we're just dealing with the clog is a little bit further down the line there. And we're gonna have to uh, add in another 10 feet of PVC here. Coming to the other end of the culvert pipe to see if we got any movement and it is like, it is a very slow trickle there. It's definitely not moving uh, the kind of water we need to move. And let me show you guys how devastating it is when that pipe plugs up. Uh, yeah, check this out. So we want everything to stay in the pipe, not run down the road here and completely undermine and wash out. Look at that concrete. It's completely washed out from where we just kind of threw a quick little drainage swell in there. Uh, this is not the first time I filled this in. We definitely should have way more water than that coming through here. Good news is though, some water is moving. So we're not completely blocked, but Let's run back up to the house, grab another 10 foot stick and uh, see if we can get further. I wish I had the right fittings and couplings to uh, just glue on screw ends so I can screw on another 10 foot, slide it in the hole, screw on another 10 foot. Yep, couldn't find the fittings. So we're just gonna splice this together. Let all that water come out. Again, one of my favorite tools, the Milwaukee PVC cutter. This thing is freaking awesome. Now we have one ridiculously long <laughs> piece of pipe here. <laughs> This is ridiculous. All right, we're near the hole. Wish me luck here. <laughs> Let's just see what happens with the Extendo 3000. Got water on the end there. Yep, I see some water down there. All right, we're going in, boys, we're going in. Oh, Jesus. Oh. All right, hold on. Well, we fell in first. All right, so far we're going smooth. We need a little resistance there. I feel like the lock picking lawyer. We haven't freed anything up yet. We're almost already extending our... God, I hope we don't have to go 30 feet. This is gonna suck. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I see some draining going on. 
Okay, okay. I'm liking this. We might have finally done it. Look at that. I was hoping we wouldn't uh, reach a clog that I couldn't get out, but there's got to be a rock or something in there. And based on like where this stops and where that booger stops is it's probably about about right here somewhere, which sucks because that's beyond where I can cut the pipe open. But I'm going to chip out some of the concrete that's on top right here and then we're bringing out all the toys. A toy I've only used really once since I've owned it is the old Milwaukee inspection camera. So we're going to shove this thing down in there. I'm going to break open the top of the pipe as far you know to the driveway as i can and then we'll send this little booger down in there with the camera and and hopefully there's not too much concrete on top of here oh well that's pretty easy to chip away oh, oh maybe i spoke too soon it's just right on the top of the pipe I'm probably putting holes in the pipe like this but it is what it is the pipe is nice and exposed broke the concrete out all the way Pretty much as close to the driveway as I can get. I'm gonna use, I don't know, let's see. We'll probably cut a hole in it with a sawzall. Maybe that'll be like a little overflow hole. If something gets clogged down here, it can go in there. Or that's gonna get clogged. I don't have any like filter cloth to put over top of it, so it's just gonna have to work. I can see our PVC pipe down there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So this thing is super cool. You can see it's got an LED light on the end that you can turn on and off or you can make it brighter or dimmer. Let's make it super bright because obviously we're going in a dark hole there. It is so dark in there. The light's not even doing anything. There's our pipe. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. All right, so I think I'm quickly learning I'm not a good sewer inspector. Hopefully you guys can see on the screen there. It's a little tough to see what we're looking at. It's even tough for me not looking at the camera. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on in there. But I can definitely tell I'm hitting something. You guys can hear that, the water is definitely up against something. Now you guys can see just how much stuff has come out of the pipe. Look at that, that is, that is deep right there. Um, and water's flowing a lot better now. So that's good. I think we're just gonna have to call that a win for now. Um, there's really not much more I can do without tearing the driveway up. So we're gonna call that good. Now we gotta go scour around the property, try and find some rocks to build some type of thing over there to slow the water down and hold the sediment back. So we're going down way over to this corner of the property. That's where I seem to see most of the rocks exposed and lying around. So we'll go grab what we can. I grabbed a couple of pieces of concrete back there. Go rock pick in here. Hopefully the mini truck makes it because some of this area is like, you don't want four wheel drive for going out there. Oh, there's a whole rock valley in there. Ooh, some of those are big though. <laughs> Ooh. First, we're gonna go grab this one down here though, because it's on the lower end and we're gonna try to make it back up this hill. This hill doesn't look like much, but in a two wheel drive mini truck, <laughs> we may or may not make it up this hill, especially because the truck don't have a whole lot of power. That's a lot heavier than she looks. Notice a bunch more up here. A little more manageable size of in this area. This is where I missed the Mini X. Well, I came down here for one rock before we went back up that hill over there, but uh, yeah, we got quite a few. The other ones are just too buried to dig out right now by hand. So let's see if we make it up there with an extra few hundred pounds here in the bed. Oh geez, <laughs> this is gonna be rough. No. Oh no. Yeah guys, I think we might have might have put a little too many rocks in this thing. Well, I was able to make it. I uh, know this might not look that steep on camera, but that's significantly steep right there. Uh, I just backed all the way up as far as I could that way, hard charge it around the corner. 
made it up barely. We stalled out like right there. She ran out of power. I don't know how much more I want to add of these rocks. I don't even know if I can move these. These boogers look big. We might need to bring the dump trailer over here. Some pretty hefty boys in there. Whew. That one's a monster. Ooh, there's some good stuff up in here. I've never walked on this part of the property. This is like Coyote Trail Central. You can see like a, they walk through right here, all the matted down stuff. They go up through there. You can see all perfect little coyote trail or some type of animal trail. There's actually some really good rocks in here. We might be grabbing the Mini X and the uh, dump trailer. I want this monster. Look at that big boy right there. I don't know what we're going to do with that. Okay, so we've made it back to the gate here with these monsters. I'm going to try to not break up a foot here. Woo. So change of plans. My neighbors just came by. They're actually going to bring their uh, tractor up and then I'm going to pick them with the Mini X, throw them in the bucket of the tractor, which will save me time of having to like Take the Mini X all the way to that side of the property, walk all the way back, bring the uh, dump trailer with the truck all the way out there, and then have to like do that three times. So it's gonna be a huge help. I've got some freaking awesome neighbors out here. And now we are fighting uh, daylight here because we are losing that very quickly. Well, shoot, they ain't wasting any time. for the next lap. That's a little big. Is there room? Not really. We'll get some of these little ones in here. Listen guys, I love this Mini X for many reasons, but this is just one of them. One of many. out here are like icebergs I would see little tips and be like oh that's cool it's a nice little one and like they're all just monsters coming out of the ground which is cool these are like great landscaping boulders a little bit bigger than what I need so I'm trying to find smaller ones we're just gonna have to take a bunch of big stuff though and like try to sprinkle some smaller stuff in me yeah we'll take this load and then I think maybe one or two of the big ones and then Okay. The coyotes are probably gonna be pissed. I'm trudging through their trail here. I found some smaller ones up in the back. Just knock these down with our backfill blade as we're coming in. So I found a good pile right there. Some little boogers. We're gonna grab those. God, look at these rocks. Ooh, that's a nice one right there. I want some more gray rocks out here, like big gray boulders. That's a good looking boulder right there. Yeah, that's pretty good size right there. I paid good money for rocks that size at my old house. We'll just toss these in by hand. That way we can take them back up front to put in the loader. That way he doesn't have to bring his tractor all the way back up in here. I don't want to scratch up his old Massey Ferguson. So as you guys can see, uh, we're losing our battle with daylight here. Uh, we're going to take one more load up to the gate and then we got to get up there and start placing them because we have rain that's supposed to hit here in about five to ten minutes. Uh, it's not going to be anything gnarly right now, but we want to fix our issue before we have another issue. We got our final load here following Earl out in his tractor. Well, a huge, huge, huge thank you to my neighbor today for uh, yeah moving all this with this tractor. There's some, some pretty big monsters in there. I'm going to use that booger right there to replace where I just stacked these blocks and it kept blowing out. Um, and then I wish I had found a bunch of smaller ones, but we didn't. So I'm going to take what little small ones that I have right here, stack those around the inlet of the drain pipe, and then start to stack out from there. We'll fill in a bunch right here where it kind of has bypassed my old little thing that we built there. I'm going to do my best for you guys to see here. So I'll do a little time lapse. Hopefully the uh, mini excavator lights are enough for some good footage.
up moving a good amount of rock here. And quite honestly, it's probably used a good amount more, but this one ended up being really cool right here. Kind of making that turn into the driveway. Hopefully this dam now holds water back a little bit. Um, Still it has time to go in the drain. I'm not really sure. Washing the rocks down right now. That way any mud and stuff that's on there uh, gets rinsed down the drain now with some sizable amount of water behind it. It's only these little ones right here in the middle. These ones are the ones that are stacked on the drain. That way uh, it can be moved by hand without having to bring the mini X back out here. So quick check on this end of the coal bear pipe. Looks like we are flowing really well now. And I'm sure everybody's gonna tell me about the video that went viral of the guy like dragging a tire through from one side to the other. And that is genius in a bigger pipe. Fortunately, a pipe this size, can't really do that. We could probably get away with like the chain trick where you run a chain all the way through and then you pull that back and forth, but it's gonna have to be like a 300 foot chain by the time we're done here. Our biggest issue is the other end of the culvert pipe. The, uh, that skinny end, it's just, it's just too skinny. It's not adequate for the amount of water. Um, it was probably adequate when it was put in because there weren't water issues like there are now because there's a lot of vegetation to slow the water down. Now, there's, with the fires that came through here, there's just no vegetation to slow the water down. We're starting to get a little bit more growing back, but it's been, uh, been pretty brutal. Tonight we got rain, tomorrow we got rain. We'll check back in when it's daylight. See how this stuff's holding up. Well, so far today, guys, we don't have any gnarly rain. We just got this like light mist and some pretty annoying winds, but we've got some good news. We've got Chris over here uh, doing some real rain gutter work on the guest house. He, he ripped off my Hokey Home Depot stuff that uh, lasted for all of a day. We got some real seamless rain gutters going in. You need another stand over there? So obviously guys, the benefits to seamless rain gutters is, well, you don't have a bunch of seams that are gonna leak, that you need to caulk, that over time the caulking is gonna get worn out in the sun or anything like that. So whoever uh, came up with this concept was pretty slick. So obviously the material just comes on a roll like that as uh, flat metal and then you run it through, I guess, whatever profile you have set in your machine here. And as much material as you have on that roll is, I guess, how long of a piece you can make. Uh, this one is 47 foot, eight and a half inches or eight inches. That's a big piece. That's gonna do that whole side in one run versus trying to piece together a bunch of 10 foot sticks like the good old days. That was just gonna be my next question. So you've done 80 feet? Yeah. Jeez, what's your company? I mean, thank you for uh, answering my call and coming out here to help me out here. Yeah, so it's California Roofing Contractors. Awesome. We're based out of Chula Vista. There you go. All right, so. If any of you guys need seamless rain gutters or roofing, right? You can just do yeah, roofing too? I do uh, sheet metal roofing. Sheet metal roofing? Okay, yeah. there you go. Oh, well, I got some more stuff for you then on that too. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you guys hit up Chris. Chris came out. I mean, it's a cold, windy, rainy day. Nobody wants to be working outside today, but these boys are out here cranking away, getting the gutters down on the roof for me. They told me they'd be out here today. Uh, we didn't know the weather was going to be like this, but they actually still showed up, which I very much appreciate and value. Yeah, it's actually not bad. I thought it was going to be way more flimsy. So on this corner of the house, which is really the main reason we started to address the rain gutter issue, uh, we kept it pretty much the same as I had done it, but like more of a professional level here. So we had to run that little piece right there and then typically you don't run gutters along the rake there because well, you don't have any overflow that way. Um, but to get the water from that little section right there out of here, it's gonna have to go down that rake and then tie back into the main system. And then we're gonna end up with two downspouts. I wanted just one, but um, and in order to get this front piece over here low enough to catch this piece because it's below these rake tiles, um, we decided to split it in the middle there. Uh, so it's going to fall this way and it's going to fall that way. So there'll be a downspout over here that'll tie into that post as well as the other side there. And they both have drains below them. That way um, they'll all go in straight into a drain and then it doesn't just flood out the yard and those drains carry everything out that way. The rain just keeps coming and going. Like I just want it to rain at this point now so I can see if everything that we did yesterday actually works. Um, unfortunately, it's raining too much that we can only get this one corner piece put in with the downspout. We can't finish out the other side because it's raining too much for them to seal it. So they're gonna come back tomorrow and uh, get this knocked out. Plus we'll have the actual connector to tie the downspout into the drains there. And then on this side, again, the original plan was not to put a downspout over here, but that's just the way it ended up working out. Since this is the one that they can't seal, Chris went ahead and just put a piece of like flashing that he made on top of the wall here to prevent any more water from hopefully staining it. I think at this point the roof is clean enough, but just in case he wanted to go the extra mile there and put us a little piece of temporary flashing there, 
uh, until they get back here tomorrow to basically dial everything in. We should have a break in the weather tomorrow. And then the next day is when we're gonna get hit really hard with the rain. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it for the rest of the day today. If it picks up enough to where we actually have water going down to uh, the whole little drainage setup that we did yesterday, I will pull out the camera. If not, there's gonna be a day lapse here until uh, we get some big rain. Well, a new day is upon us, guys, and I think we've got sufficient amount of water, as you can see by all the puddling up there. It's been raining since about, I don't know, four this morning. It's not super, super heavy, but I think it's just been consistent enough that we're gonna be able to see how the driveway handled. We're loading up the Bronco right now, and because I don't have the gray OBS, it is currently getting the brakes fixed on it. Long overdue, hopefully they actually get them fixed. But unfortunately, that means uh, we get to use the Bronco as a work truck today because, well, we got to go do some work. So we got the miter saw loaded up there. Unfortunately, it wouldn't fit in the back with the table saw. Oh, and of course, the donkeys have made an absolute mess of the front porch here. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate and disgusting. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. You know you have an entire animal stall up there with a roof. Very similar to this that you can hang out in, but you have to do this. Yeah. Thanks guys, appreciate you. I just ran up to the guest house to do a little quick check on all the rain gutters there and it appears everything is working awesome. And then on the other side here, we never anticipated having a uh, downspout here. So we just stubbed that one out a little bit. There's a drain right there. We didn't put the drain over there because we never really plan on tying it in, but it seems to be working just fine. The water just runs from there to that drain. So one more thing checked off the list of the guest house. Now we can head down to the gate, but just look how good the Bronco looks. I feel like, like this was the weather meant for the Bronco. As much as I hate it because it gets all dirty and muddy on our dirt road, but it just looks so good in this lighting. Well, you can see we've got substantial water here. It is making its way all the way out to the street. Coming out the gate now, and uh, let's see what we got. I think we're looking pretty good. We've got, uh, well, this big area. I dug a big pit right here last night, and uh, hopefully all the sediment like goes down there, and then just the clean water can trickle through. But so far, it's looking good. Looks like those big boulders over there are holding everything coming back from that side of the street. And so far, it looks like a little bit of milky water there, but it doesn't look too bad. I think we're looking pretty good. Now you can see on this side of the pipe, we gotta fix all that where it washed out, but looks like we've got some pretty solid, just consistent flow there, which is what we want. So hopefully, hopefully this time we are fixed. <laughs> um, at least to hold us over until we again upgrade the size of that pipe. Road's starting to get a little soupy there in the middle. I know it's not gonna look bad at all on camera. Uh, it's actually not too, too bad right now. I think it's already so saturated from the last couple days of rain, but we got a couple of big puddles, just like this one right here. We're just gonna go slow through that so we don't make a big old mess. And we're through the worst of it. And it's good, because now the rain is of course starting to pick up, but I think uh, we're gonna call it a wrap for this video. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.